that with all of these accounts just to make the worksheet work. Uh, that's just how the worksheet's going to work. Don't worry about this side over here. That's going to be when we adjust the information. The first thing you're going to probably say is, well, you know, we have an income statement. Let's go look at the income statement and see if that's the right number. And if we go over here and we go to the income statement, uh, we're going to say, no, it's not. The net income is 158.1. It's not the change in retained earnings, or it doesn't appear to be in this case. And why would that be? Because there's more things happening in the retained earnings. What else could have happened? We could have paid dividends. We could have, you know, paid dividends on it. So obviously we did pay dividends on it. But once again, we're going to have to break that out. We're going to have to break that out later into multiple different numbers. So I'm going to basically highlight this and say, you know what? That number is not right. But before I start breaking that out, let's find a home for all these numbers. Let's be in balance. Then let's go back and break that out into its components. So that's why I'm not going to go to the income statement at this point, except to verify the fact that that number is going to need more work to it. All right, but now we found a home for this one. So I can say, that's good. I'm going to make this one green. Found a home for it. All right, for the rest of it, I'm going to just go from this side down. So remember, we're going to skip cash because that's going to be the ending. We're going to go to receivables next time. So we got this change in receivables. And the question is, where are we going to put the change? Is it in the uh, cash flows from operations, cash flows from investing, cash flows from financing? And what you want to do is think about, well, is there an income statement account related to receivables? And the way to think about that is, well, what's the most common journal entry we have with receivables? We probably sell something on account. Therefore, we debit receivables and um, we credit revenue. Revenue being an income statement account. Therefore, this is something that's probably going to go, it is going to go on the statement of operations because the statement of operations is the income statement on a cash flow basis. It's us adjusting net income to a cash flow basis. So the difference in retained earnings is going to be on the uh, operating sections. Now, we've got two different sections here. We have uh, adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash provided by operations, and we've got changes in current asset and current liabilities. You're kind of just going to have to know and start to feel where that goes. Uh, the accounts receivable is a current asset. Therefore, it's going to be here in the change to current assets. Uh, the, the next question is, will it increase or decrease net income? And we'll talk about that. You may want to first just have a cheat sheet with you uh, to, to memorize the rule and then think through it. You don't really want to go into a test and have to think through the rule again, even though it's a good practice to think through the rule because in a test taking situation, it's really easy to get all tied up on it. So the general rule is going to be this. You can write it down. It's going to be uh, increase. Uh, I'm going to put a negative and then decrease. And what this means is that if if accounts receivable went up, then it's going to bring our cash flow down. So our net income here is going to go down if the accounts receivable went up. If, however, accounts receivable went down, then uh, AR is going to increase. So let's take a look at what we have, and then we'll get into some detail on that. We're going to say that accounts receivable went from uh, 80750 down to 771 that's going to be a decrease in accounts receivable. Therefore, it's going to bring up the uh, cash flow statement here. So it's actually, we're going to use our same formula. We're always going to say negative of this number means it's going to be an increase, meaning I'm going to put the formula in here right now. We're going to say this equals the sum. This is the total cash flow of all of these from the net income down to here. And obviously what that does is it, it brings up this number. So that's what's going to happen for all assets. Basically, if, if accounts receivable went down or if the asset went down, we're going to add it or increase the cash flow. So now let's try to think through why that would be. We're not going to think through why it would be for all accounts, but the same kind of logic for receivable will be applicable to all other accounts. So if we think about uh, the receivable account, how does it go up or down? Well, a receivable account goes up if we... Uh, sell something on account where we're going to debit accounts receivable, credit sales. So that's a transaction that happens when, and we don't get any money for it. And when does it go down? That's when we collect cash and then we debit cash and credit the receivable. 
So what that means is that if accounts receivable went down overall, that second transaction happened more often than the first transaction, meaning the second transaction, we got cash on a cash basis. We got more cash than we did have sales. So you can kind of think as a net, as a net whole, we debited cash and we credited accounts receivable. And on a cash basis, we need to recognize the fact that we, we got cash and therefore we should be uh, recognizing the kind of like the revenue be on the time period that we received the cash. So that's, and the reverse would be, the, the, the other logic would be reversed if accounts receivable went up. That means on a net basis, we did more of the transaction of, we debited, of making sales on account. We debited accounts receivable and credited sales. And uh, therefore, we have in net income, we would have in that case, in net income uh, money that we have not yet received because we received it on account. We haven't got the money yet. Therefore, if accounts receivable went up, we're going to have to bring it down. We're going to have to bring net income down by the change to get it to a cash basis because we haven't yet got that money. So you can kind of think through that logic. I know that could get confusing, but and on a test, I would just have, you know, your little cheat sheet where you got the increase is going to bring, bring it down and the decrease is going to bring it up where you can just kind of remind yourself on all assets, all other assets will be the same. So I'm going to highlight that and say we found a home for that. Inventory, we're going to do the same type of analysis. So I'm just going to write down the same basically thing here. I'm just going to copy this down, but then I'm going to make it for inventory. And again, I won't go through the logic again, but you, it's the same rule for all assets. Basically, increase is going to bring it down, decrease, bring it up. We're going to use the negative formula to point to that 10, 1, which will flip the sign and that will bring up the balance. So inventory uh, went from 257 down to 246 meaning we're going to have to add it back add back the difference to the cap to the net income for the cash flow statement all right i'm going to highlight that we found a home for that then we've got the prepaid expense we're going to have the uh, same idea here so i'm going to copy that down that is also an asset so we're going to do the same same thing i'm going to put negative of that number it's going to flip the sign and once again an, an increase brings it down a decrease makes it go up and what happened, it decreased, therefore it brings up the balance. I'm going to highlight that. We found a home for that. We're now going to the equipment. Now, when we think about the equipment account, we got to think, well, where is the equipment going to go? Is it going to go to the cash flows from operating, cash flows from investing, cash flows from financing? And when we buy the equipment, you can think about if we purchased more equipment, like a new building or, some, or you know, a new forklift, then we do do we put anything on the income statement and the answer is no we, we debit the asset and we credit cash if we bought it for cash we do expense it over time called depreciation expense but when we buy the building itself not affecting the income statement therefore it's not going to be on the cash flows from operating which is basically the cash flow part of the the uh, the income statement part of the cash flow statement therefore it's going to either be in investing or financing and a lot of people get this one kind of kind of mixed up. It's actually going to go into the investing. And I know when I was learning this, I always thought, well, investing means stocks and bonds. That's what investing means. But uh, when we think about the business, investing means anything that we're putting into a long term uh, investment in order to help us generate revenue in the future. So we are, in this case, investing in the equipment, putting our money into the equipment so that it can help us generate revenue in the future. So that is an investment in that sense. So I know that can be a little confusing, but that's where the equipment's going to go down here. And if the equipment went up, we're, we're going to assume that we bought more equipment. What happened? Well, that change must be a result that we bought more equipment. So we're going to make that assumption right now. Now, I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to put the difference of 62250 and make the assumption that we bought that equipment with cash. Then I'm going to make it yellow, just like we did up here, because that might not be the case, right? We could have bought it for, I mean, it's very possible that if we bought equipment that we financed a large part of it. And if that's the case, then we didn't pay cash for it fully. And we'll have to go back and break that out into a couple different numbers. But let's find a home for all these numbers first and then go see if that's the case or not. So we're going to put cash paid for the purchase of equipment because we're talking about the cash flow statement. We're going to do the same thing we do all for all these numbers. I'm going to put a negative and then point to that 62,250 and that'll flip the sign. So it's going to be a decrease. In this case, it's going to decrease the cash flow. 
And then I'm going to highlight this and say we found a home for that. And once again, I'm going to make this yellow because I'm going to, I, I want to go back and check that. I want to see, okay, did we pay cash for it? What, what was, how did we buy that? Did we finance part of it? It's very possible that we finance part of that. Okay. Let's take a look at the next. Then we have accumulated depreciation here. Now the accumulated depreciation, if we think about that, once again, where does it go? Is it good? Does it go in the cash flow from operating, investing or financing? And you might be thinking, well, it's related to the equipment. Why doesn't it go, you know, it should go into the investing over here. But uh, if you think of the other side, again, of the uh, accumulated depreciation, when do we uh, journalize that account? Well, the journal entry is always debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. And that uh, expense, the other side, is an income statement account. So that means if, it, if it's an income statement account, it's going to be up here in the operating section. So that's going to be part of the operating section and it's not going to be down here in changes in current liabilities it's going to be up top in this case and we just put it up top because this is kind of something that is on the income statement and we recognize the expense but of course there's no cash related to it so uh, you know the the cash either got paid when we purchased it or or whenever the financing terms are so we're just going to put it up here i'm going to put depreciation and we're going to say that that's going to be a negative of this 15750 and there we have that and it's going to bring net income back up now if we think about that why would that happen well because when we uh, expensed it it brought net income down so this number includes net income bringing it down however uh, this depreciation expense has no nothing to do with cash therefore it needs to be backed out it needs to we need to increase the net income by the depreciation expense so we're going to go ahead and highlight that we found a home for the depreciation expense now we do want to verify that too on the income statement so i might want to highlight that here and say you know it's possible i want to check the income statement and make sure that the depreciation expense equals 15750 is there a time when it wouldn't equal 16750 yes there is what if we what if we sold equipment or had disposals of equipment so that we just we want to double check that number and see if any other things happen but we want to do that at a later time because we don't want to start you know messing all these numbers up and without uh, first being in balance all right so now let's go to the payable we got the payable account here uh, we think about the change in the payable account if we think about what the other account is related to the payable well, oftentimes we would debit an expense and credit the payable uh, or or debit inventory and credit the payable, but then cost of goods sold is related to that. <laughs> so that means that those are income statement accounts, the expense and the cost of goods sold. Therefore, uh, we want to put the change in the payable into the cash flows from operations. It's going to be down here in the changes in current assets and current liabilities. So we did the current assets. Now we're going to do the current liabilities. This is the only current liability that we will be doing. And uh, note that it's going to be, of course, opposite from the assets. So when we think about it, we might want to just, again, have the cheat sheet rule. These are all the assets that are doing this. An increase is going to uh, bring down the cash flow. A decrease is going to bring it up. So that means that the um, accounts payable is, of course, the opposite. So that means that an increase is going to increase and a decrease is going to decrease. And again, you, you really want to have kind of a cheat sheet, a crutch on, on a test or something because it, you could get totally backwards on <laughs> when you start thinking about these. But it is good practice as well to think about this, because if you can understand this, then you're really kind of understanding the accrual process. So the accounts payable, why would that be? Why would it be that um, if if the accounts payable is going up then we're going to increase the net income well the two journal entries that happen to accounts payable when we think about accounts payable we're going to you know uh, we bought something on account which means we debit expense and credit accounts payable making accounts payable go up and the other thing that happens is we pay it off we pay off the accounts payable by paying cash crediting cash and debiting accounts payable so if accounts payable went up, then we can say that on on a whole, on net, then we purchased more things on account than we paid off on account, meaning we debited the expense and we credit accounts payable more often than, than the other side. So as a whole, we can think of it, the change as a whole is that we basically debited an expense or something, 
and then we credited accounts payable. So we expensed something that we didn't pay for in, in that sense. And therefore, we're recording an expense that needs to be backed out. So we have an expense that brought down this number.